Um, can everybody hear me fine? Okay, so I, I was in the Marine Corps for a few years and um, I, I'll use my Marine voice. Um, I, I, first of all, I want to thank Mark. I want to thank the opportunity for uh, being here tonight. I, I thank you for getting the word out uh, so that we could share with the public the things that we're doing in the county. Um, as most of you know, uh, the ballot initiative that was put out in uh, November uh, was put out asking uh, the public to uh, uh, support the budget requirements for 2020. Um, that included making sure that we kept the jail open and other critical services across the county. Um, and th and that, that's a good thing. The Taxpayer Bill of Rights requires us to go to the people to ask them uh, permission uh, to do things. And so the board went to the people and the people uh, spoke. Um, so we've made our budget adjustments. As you see, these are the budget numbers for 2020. But now we need to look at 2021. And that's what I've asked the team to do. So immediately after the November election, um, we've got our staff working on prioritizing those things that only government can do, which means things like law enforcement, uh, development and transportation, um, prosecution, the jail, those types of things that only government can do because we're at a minimum, we need to be able to do those services for you to make sure that you're safe and that things that you um, expect from your local government are done. What that also means is that we need to look across the county at those things that um, government doesn't only do, that there are other opportunities for other organizations to step in and to do. So we look at uh, essential services, non-essential services, places for either reform, reduction, or elimination. In December, before the break, um, I asked Dexter Foxworth, who is the director uh, for events and venues, to look real hard to see how we might be able to turn the fairgrounds into an enterprise. Um, as you can see from the numbers up here, the, the fairgrounds uh, operates on about $1.8 million, a little bit more in 2020, but um, we operate about $1.8 million. And that's with a 28% cost recovery. I had the team look really hard. How can we get to an enterprise? An enterprise means that, uh, like our airport, uh, less than 10% of the funding comes from the government, from our general fund, which is paid for by property taxes, uh, and is about a third of our total overall budget because there's money that come in from the federal uh, government and so forth, and that's earmarked for very specific uh, projects, things like open space. Those dollars can't be spent elsewhere than other than open space. So the team looked at a lot of different efficiencies. They looked at things like increasing rates, new partnerships, salary savings from uh, headcount, uh, staff movement, uh, maybe looking at closing the fairgrounds one day a week, uh, reduced contracted work. Um, they looked at a lot of different things. There's a, who, who's here that works for the fairgrounds? Of course, we've got our team here. Is there anybody in the audience that works at the fairgrounds? These men and women, they love their jobs. They love what they do. They work hard to try to come up with some ideas on how they might get to that 90% cost recovery uh, to be able to um, um, keep the fairgrounds and to keep the fairgrounds operating in a way that doesn't burden the taxpayer um, in terms of, doesn't look at us closing a second floor of the jail or other things across the county that are important that only government can do. Um, what they came up with is they basically came up with a plan that could go from 28% cost recovery to about 57% cost recovery. That is a great improvement, but it doesn't get us to 90%. And so um, what I called Mark about last week was to tell him that I'd be presenting to the board those results and looking for what's next. Because $1.8 million is a lot of money and unless we could become an enterprise and pull that entire amount off, the revenue counts against us as well. And so even though the fairgrounds might recover half that cost, that money can be made up elsewhere. That money from the general fund must be spent on the fairgrounds because it's the revenue it's like it's poured back into the fairgrounds. And we're talking about the operations specifically. For clarity, I'm not talking about shutting down Western Airs. We're not talking about shutting down 4-H or CSU extension. So for those that are concerned about that, that's not what we're talking about right now. We're talking about 
all of the things that support what you saw on that calendar. And it does have an impact on some of those organizations. But to be clear, that's not what we're, we're talking about, the 11 men and women that work here at the county and the operations that they support, uh, which is everything from equestrian riding and so forth to uh, WWE events and book sales. Okay. Um, so there's three options that I'm going to brief the board. They stay the course, which means that the, the general fund still impacts by almost $2 million. Cease fairground operations in 2021 or move to an enterprise fund that would be self-sustaining. But the problem is, is that we didn't come up with a plan that can get us there. So um, unless something comes out of the woodwork within the next few weeks, and I plan on briefing the board on those three options on 4 uh, February. Got that date right. Um, that briefing will occur upstairs uh, in the briefing room. It's a public meeting, but it's not open to questions or comments. It's just a listening. Uh, the board may choose to bring that to a hearing the following week, which I suspect that will be the case given the amount of interest that um, is here tonight. Uh, which again, I, I think is part of the process and I appreciate y'all being here. So with that, I mean, I think that's pretty much everything, Mark, that I shared with you. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if you if the board has any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Um, I do have one uh, to start with uh, Mr. Davis. And, 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 and since we're a Fairgrounds Advisory Committee uh, to the commissioners, um, I think you mentioned that uh, you had uh, had the staff look at this as back going back to December 4th. Yeah, yeah, given the holidays and stuff right. like that, I asked them to start looking at some of the different options given the conversations that we've had in the past. As you know, we've looked at things like uh, our budget challenges have been coming. We've seen them coming for a while, and we've talked about things like the, the fair um, and how we can increase that um, return on rate. So, Yes, we've been. I, I asked them to kind of look at things in December, and then when what they found out, I wanted to bring back and talk to you guys first before I talked to the board. So I haven't briefed the board on this yet. No, I appreciate that. And uh, my, my concern is that uh, that this is the first time that the Fairgrounds Advisory Committee has was made aware of it, um, and and didn't get any input from from the Fairgrounds Advisory Committee to it to advise the commissioners. Um, because we didn't know anything about it until, of course, I didn't until Thursday and, and the rest of the committee now. And so, um, for me, that's a concern that, uh, that as an advisory committee, that uh, uh, there wasn't much transparency uh, as far as giving us an opportunity to be involved with the staff as far as making any recommendations. Um, so, okay. All I can say, Mark, is that we've been talking about um, revenue and the challenges out here for a while. So I don't think it's necessarily something new that we do have to become, um, that the goal has always been that where we get to the point where we're self-sustaining. But that being said, um, it's neither, I'm, I'm bringing this to you now. You've got a couple of weeks. I'm only planning to bring it to a briefing and that this is what we found. Um, if you all have something that you come up with within the next couple of weeks that we can add to the equation, then we're more than welcome uh, to do that. And the staff is uh, more than welcome to um, to work with that again, so that's why I called you last week and right. to say here's what the finding. So no, and I, I, I appreciate you calling me and letting me know. And uh, you know, it just seems like it's a really short time for the Fairgrounds Advisory Committee to be able to uh, to look at anything and, and see if there's any other um, avenues that we could pursue. Um, and because it's it's a pretty short short uh, uh, fuse that's running uh, if you're going to. Uh, um, brief the commissioners on the fourth. And I am open, Mark, if you've got some other recommendations, you would like to delay that because you've got some time. Here's what I would ask. So everybody, here, here's the thing. Delay it. Delay it. Um, delay it. <laughs> we can delay it, um, but I will tell you that the longer we delay it, if, if it ends up being the decision to the board, to, um, they're not making a decision. They're just hearing the facts of what we've got now um, and where we've got cost of business operations that happens in the fairgrounds. They know better than anybody. Um, and certainly there's input from the board that can, can help that, but they know better than anybody where the revenue is and where the expenses are. So I'll be interested in what additional can come up with that. Um, it doesn't change the numbers, ladies and gentlemen. We've got about $12.5 million that's the estimate currently. We won't know until the books close out in April.
that's about the amount that the county's got to come up with across the board. As you know, the sheriff freed prisoners on Sunday early from their sentences. And so we look across the county. We've got important decisions, and they're hard decisions. They're not easy. I don't want to come here and, and present things to you. I've been an active member of this community, and, and in, before I've been an advisor to the 4-H uh, community here. I've, um, I've worked with the fairgrounds. We've worked on trying to make the fair profitable. Um, we've not been able to do that. The closest we've been able to come is about seventy dollars to $80,000 loss. Um, it was well into the six figures previous to that. So we've done as much as we can to try to make the fair profitable. And that we have worked with the board and we have talked about that. And in 2020, we had made the decision that we wouldn't have a fair because that would be, um, it's not something that we could pay for. Um, so I, I'm open to suggestions. It's not a decision. The board will not make a decision on the fourth. I don't believe uh, that's not what I'm presenting to them. I'm just presenting to them the data that I have. And I'll be honest with you, I, I, I don't want to see the fairgrounds go away. I don't want to see a lot of the things that we do in Jefferson County go away. That's why we went to the voters and asked for permission not to do those things. So thank you. I think Alan yeah, I quickly want to touch on the working to make the fair profitable because I disagree a little bit just because we did work really hard to come up with a plan to cut costs and then the, the fair, the commissioners decided to cut that. So I feel like we we came up with a plan and then it was made by, a decision was made by another entity to get rid of that. So I, I disagree with that statement a bit. Um, but I want to go back to the decision around the fairgrounds a bit and understand how you weigh or how you prioritize community impact. Because if I look at Open Gov correctly, the whole county expenses for the whole county were around 585 million last year, is that correct? And say that the fairgrounds are about 1.7 million, that's like a, a quarter of a percentage. But if you talk about the community impact that the fairgrounds have, it's huge. So I just want to understand if you guys are factoring in community impact at all, because I feel like you are going for very, 1.7 million, that's more money than I have, but that is just small potatoes in the scheme of things. But if you right. look at the community impact, that's what's troubling me. Yes, ma'am. No, I appreciate that. Um, I don't, uh, so for the three years that I've been here, we've been working on the fair. So for three years, we've been working with the staff. So it's not, um, it wouldn't be disingenuous to say that we've been working on increasing the profit margin. There's been 11 people on the staff that have been working tirelessly to make it break even. Those of you that work with the fairgrounds know how hard these folks work to try to make it work. So we've been, we've been working really hard. That's been our goal all along. Um, impact to the community. Nobody's, nobody is saying that there isn't an impact. I'm certainly not saying that there isn't an impact to the community. For clarification, when we talk about the entire budget, $600 million is roughly the county's budget. Two thirds of that is not money that can be used for the fairgrounds. We're not talking about that. Money that comes down from the federal government to support things like um, food assistance programs and homeless programs and all those types of things. Those, that's money that is included in the budget, but that cannot be used for the fairgrounds. So part of the budget that we're talking about, when we talk about $12.5 million worth of cuts, is about the $220 million roughly that is just general fund. That is the revenue that is generated from property taxes. The rest of that $600 million comes from other sources, things like the library fund that's a separate tax, open space, which goes towards open space. None of that money can be used. So when we're talking about the $12.5 million, we're talking about just the money that is on the side of uh, the general fund. So $1.8 million is, uh, it doesn't seem like a lot in the big picture when you narrow the picture down and we're talking about $220 million. 60% of that, 50, 60% of that is spent on law enforcement and prosecution. So that goes to the sheriff and that goes to the DA. And then what's left comes from all the other things and that runs all the other programs in the county. Um, the, so so in, in short, I think 
it, it all, it, all that little bit adds up. So 1.8 may not seem like a lot, but 1.8 in terms of the 12 and a half. And what's important is I don't deny this, the, the importance of this program. I've been a part of this program since I got here. So I don't deny that. I also don't deny that the sheriff is releasing prisoners from jail before their sentence is up. So I've got to, all I can do, my job is to work for the county commissioners and balance the budget and present to them the numbers from all the different things. We're not just looking at the fairgrounds, we've been looking across the whole of government and we gotta look at those non-essential things that um, we've been looking to make sure we prioritize that those things that you expect that only government can do, that we can do those things. Uh, we're not answering, uh, just for clarification, uh, public will have a chance for public comment. Right. right now I'm answering questions from the board. My sure. How much allowance, or if any, was made for the what the county uses as, as a user of the fairgrounds facility? Various departments. Um, in, in the final analysis, the entire expenditure that we spend on the county, if we can't turn it to an enterprise, the revenue, it doesn't matter whether you make revenue, it all counts because of TABOR against the totality of the budget. So regardless of those things, the expenditure, it, it's there. And that's part of, we've been actually part of the revenue. The expenditure is there, but we're talking right. about the usage of the fairgrounds. And, and that's what was looked at when we when we looked at trying to how can we start charging for conference rooms or for things that maybe weren't previously charged for that they that the county is I'm using. talking about in that 1.8 million dollar budget and the usage of the fairgrounds what percentage of the of that fairgrounds usage is county other county entities, departments county departments right it, it makes sense if we didn't have any other place to hold those meetings there there's other locations in the county that we have that we can hold meetings. well so i, I in the end the total the expenditure is 1.8 million dollars and so we're looking at that that portion um and it's it's a if if the fairground operations were to go away that would be 1.8 million dollars that could be reallocated within the general fund it's the bottom line. Okay. Second, I've got another question. <coughs> is that is what is your plan if you cease the fairgrounds operations? You're saying that CSU Extension is going to stay here. Mm -hmm. Okay. What's your plan for the property? Mm -hmm. That's a separate conversation. We haven't analyzed. <laughs> There's a lot of things we could do with it. We could repurpose the fairgrounds to put other functions that the county needs uh, locations for. As the county grows, there may be other things that need to be here. Uh, the county could sell the property. Um, the county, well, but that, so if the value of the fairgrounds is somewhere between 12 and a half and 22 and a half million dollars, that money goes back into the general fund to keep the jail open. Um, to provide services that are important to the county. I'm not suggesting that we sell the fairgrounds. I mean, that's not what we're here. We're talking about the operations right now. Uh, we're not talking about um, Western Airs or CSU Extension or 4-H. Where are they going to ride? We're talking about animal evacuation. Okay, so we'll get back to the public uh, questions here. We'll have a public comment uh, period here after we get done with our meeting uh, with the, uh, the Fairgrounds Advisory Committee. In the meantime, I would ask that everybody please shut off your phone. Um, <laughs> and, uh, we, can finish, we can finish the rest of this meeting um, in a time uh, efficient manner. Um, so, um, So, I, I, I just want to bring up the fact that the, the mission of the Jefferson County Fairgrounds is to promote and to encourage uh, activities that are for the youth, recreation, and the agricultural communities of Jefferson County, Colorado. Um, and that mission has been there since the mid-90s. And I've been on this board for about six years now, and the mission has never changed, but yet it appears that we're, we've never been allowed to try to adapt the mission to the, the situations that you have. 
So is that still going to be the mission of the county commissioners um, for uh, the fairgrounds, or is it you're just washing it, flushing it? What is it? If they were to cease fairground operations, then I don't see how that mission would still be compiled. If they decide they want to still support that mission, then they'll stick with the status quo or figure out some lesser function um, to be able to keep it going, but in a lesser form, I don't know. So, so they weren't successful at getting a tax increase last fall, and we're supposed to be doing th things for the youth of the county, and the youth can't even vote, and we're making decisions that are gonna hurt the youth. That's right. what's available. Mm -hmm. I totally understand that. I, I, I don't disagree with anything that you said. But the bottom line is that the money going out has to equal the money coming in. And we've got to look at everything across the county that is a non-essential government service. And I'm, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm here with you. I have, I get it. I, I, don't, I don't disagree with your feelings or with where you're at. But in the final analysis, my job is to balance the budget and to bring in the facts and figures from across the county. There isn't an elected official or a department head that wants to see any of their programs cut. There isn't. And yet we'll have to come up with about $12.5 million worth of cuts. So I, I don't disagree with anything that you said. I grew up around horses. I understand um, the, the mission of the fairgrounds here. I get it. I really do. I, I'm not here. I'm not here to tell you that I'm shutting you down. That's not my decision. That'll be the board's decision. But you're telling us that you're going to make that recommendation to yeah. the board of county commissioners. Now, yeah. the board of county commissioners is there going to be a provision for public input to the board? Absolutely, there always is. There's public comment every week, and now I would imagine that based on the the demand that we have here, the board will make a decision to have it at a hearing as well. So, so I want I, I'd like to go back to the fair and fest or to the fair and festival briefly, Don, um, because the fairgrounds advisory committee was asked to look at the budget and make uh, budget recommendations for the fairgrounds, um, and and yes, we worked with the staff um, with the fair and festival. Um, during that process, the Fairgrounds Advisory Committee identified about $100,000 in the Fairgrounds budget that we recommended that the county commissioners cut. Um, instead, the staff made recommendations that they drop the Fair and Festival, which also generated income or, or some income and did a lot of good for the county. Um, that $100,000 that we identified during the budget process is still, to the best of my knowledge, in the budget. Um, and, and my feeling is, is that, that if the counties are looking at that and there's that type of, of extra money left in budgets across this county, then surely there are ways to go back and look at budgets of individual departments and identify the monies that may be a little over uh, um, appropriated um, because that's what we're doing. We're doing the and, and, we to do and instead the staff made recommendations to the commissions to drop fair and festival and that's what they did instead of cutting our budget where we identified waste in the county um, so that's my concern is that, that there, there are funds out there in this overall budget of 220 million dollars that is sitting in, in departments as slush funds because that was what was identified in addition to about the hundred thousand dollars in the fairgrounds um, budget as we went through it. We, we have this money and we can use it anywhere because um, it's not identified it has to go anywhere but they were still appropriating it for the following year um, so so I, I have a huge concern that there are other ways to cut budgets to um, make up the budget shortfalls um, without cutting programs for the youth, the agricultural, and 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 a fairgrounds that that is the only facility in the county that offers the type of services that this fair. It's the only facility in the county. Um, that's my concern. So, is there a, is there a question? <laughs> well, I, my my question would be 
would be it, it, is, is, the, is the county, uh, if they're looking to back balance the budget, are they willing to go back and look at their departments? I've been involved with some, some major um, budgets in the past, and I know how those budgets work, and they said, well, we used it last year, so we may need it next year, and they put it in the following year for the budget, um, and, and then it's, it's just there. Um, and, and that's my concern is that, that there is money available in our budget that may be looked at without cutting, especially a fairgrounds that generates the good for the youth and the agricultural. It's the only only uh, facility that, that really generates. All right, so, so, so they're not asking to cut, or, or maybe you can tell us, maybe, are they asking to cut the budgets of the ball fields? Um, and so the ball field, we don't, okay, so this is a great question. Now, there's a lot of misinformation out there. We don't run the ball fields. The, community, the cities run the ball fields. So so to your point, in open space, if you're talking about open space dollars. Right, now I'm not talking the, about open space dollars, but, but okay, so I, I'm, ball I'm, sure parks, I don't, I'm sure there's a lot of other youth, youth money out there that they're not looking at cutting budget. We don't, not in our budget. We don't, so, those are the communities. We don't run parks and rec. We don't do that. The municipalities do that. So, so and for clarification, I, I, I appreciate, I appreciate the comments about wasteful opportunities out there. I constantly, I, I came from, I fought for the freedoms of this country. I know very well where you guys are at and how important it is to make sure that we do things wisely. The staff and I take very seriously the obligations of our duties and the offices of which we are. We're looking for fraud, waste, and abuse all the time. We are. So if you find something that you see, so I'm I, not I just, looking for fraud. I, I'm not. I'm not talking about fraud. I'm talking about budgets that are overinflated because they budgeted for the items last year. In this particular budget, we found monies that were rebudgeted for the the uh, improvements to the. Uh, um, rooms upstairs that that <clears throat> that those improvements had already been made the previous year and yet we were budgeting the money again um, for the second year and and we did make that recommendation um, but unfortunately I, I believe that money is still in that budget and uh, and that bothers me um, to be quite I'll honest. Look into it. Yeah, I would I'll look into it. It. I can go back and just on one here's a question okay consideration is when I talked about asked about what what you're going to do with with the facility okay and you don't know and it's that that's in the thought process and you don't want to sell it but it, maybe it would be used for repurposing it for other county buildings or or needs all right so what we're talking about is shutting down a facility servicing this segment of the community, the youth, the agricultural, recreation, for the benefit of improving the office space availability for county departments. That's no. it, that's it. So, all right, so for clarification, if one of the things that we would consider is we've got a number of DMV offices. So there's five DMV offices, I believe it's five. So how do we go down to four? So is there a location where we could co-locate one office and another office that could be here? So that's not about improving. That's about still doing other cuts and figuring out how we can leverage the property that we have so that we don't have to go out and we can shut down a lease or a piece of property that we already have. Um, save money there. We're, we're looking for cuts everywhere. We're trying to figure it all out and how it pieces together. So um, I, looking to make this benefit some other community or some other portion of the community, that's, that's, I don't see that happening. Like an example, sir, give me an example of what you think would happen. Who, who would we benefit in the county that would be separate from this group? Like human services, people that help those folks that are in most need? No, like, no. I mean, like, what, what, like, 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 like the county clerk's office. Yeah. That's okay. been up in discussions before, that, that using, moving those offices out to the fairgrounds. Because there needs to be space for more courtrooms to prosecute cases, because there's more. Well, so we have looked at a facilities master plan. How can we, in the next 20 years, develop a plan 
that allows for the growth of the county without increasing our infrastructure footprint. That requires a movement of a lot of folks around. That requires more courtrooms. So in the next 20 years, we need two courtrooms. We're in the process of building one additional courtroom. In that process, you've got to move folks around. Moving people out of the Jefferson County Courthouse out here to the fairgrounds isn't necessary. I mean, if you look at that, is that's an improvement or that's when that's like to their advantage. It's about having the courtrooms that we need to have in order to prosecute the demands of the county. I, if you got better answers, I'm open for answers. I'm open. I definitely am open for recommendations or answers. <laughs> Every every group has wants to, has the same passion about what you're doing. They do. I'm sure that's probably true. I, th I think this group. I think I think when you're dealing with the youth of the, of the county and uh, and the historical um, um, benefits that this fairgrounds has afforded members of this county for many many years. And can continue to that it is that I'm I, I know I'm very passionate about it I know this whole board is very passionate about it and it sounds to me like our audience is very passionate about it um, and so um, I think I think our youth is the most important <coughs> asset we have and to uh, to not support our youth you know for the first time in uh, that I can remember uh, we have we have more fair members uh, 4-H fair members and now we have I believe three chapters of FFA in, in Jefferson County that I have never seen before um, to, to see that growth coming and then to see it all go away and not support the kids that really need it um, the support I think it would be a shame so um, that's so yes I am passionate and, um, you know, so I, I love the history of this facility, and I love what it's done for the youth for this county for a long time. You know, the benefits, the benefits for, for for what it's done for the youth, in my mind, um, as far as putting kids, giving them tools to keep them off the streets and not end up on the streets and in the prisons down the road, is just as great as keeping the prisoners in the prison today. Maybe great. Couldn't agree more. And that's what went to the ballot. And the ballot was the key. No, I'm not talking about the ballot. Oh, 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 the ballot was about paper. But the county's talking about shutting down. The, 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 the taxpayers didn't talk about shutting down the fairgrounds. They talked talked about no new taxes um, and voted their conscience on it. Um, and, and and it's not them that are shutting down these these facilities. Um, it's the county that's shutting it down. It's not it's not the, the ballot, um, in my estimation. Um, and, and I don't think they made a decision that said, well, we're not going to support the youth. I think they, 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 they stated really clearly that um, the county should find a way to balance their budget, um, and I believe we should do it without it. You know, I've been on, this, on the Fair Advisory Committee for 25 plus years, and during that period of time, there have been financial crunches, financial challenges, up and down, big ones. This is the first time that any board of county commissioners has considered the option of closing the fairgrounds because of the, the belief in the heritage, Western heritage, belief in the value of the programs that were available to the, to the county. So someplace there, I think that there's gotta be a place for that consideration in the decision making from the county commissioners I and i hope that this will be passed on to the county commission yeah, will be. I, and that's why we're here that's why that's why i talked that's about why i'm not really yeah. then i'm, I, 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 I'm, 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 I'm really glad see, you're here it, it's great to see the public participate in this process i, I don't i don't disagree and, and we appreciate you coming out and taking the time to uh, to bring us up to date. Um, I'm, I, I wish we'd have known about it a little earlier, um, but I'm still glad you're here to, to do that. And, uh, and I understand, but budgets are but budgets are hard. But 
but so is raising youth in Jefferson County and the other counties. And as long as I've been involved with with the, the Jefferson County Fairgrounds, that, and that has been most of my life, every other county in this state and cities have wished they had of the youth program that Jefferson County has had as far as agricultural and equine and recreation. And and I think it's a shame to uh, to not acknowledge that for this county and, and, and that that maybe we ought to look at what we ought to be proud of because that's what we ought to be, really be proud of is, is the youth that, and, and what we do for the youth and, and who's going to run this county 25 years from now. And, and all of those, in my estimation, <laughs> those you turn into uh, the citizens um, that <coughs> give to back to the county. Um, you look at all these youth organizations and you look at the youth that comes back and, and, and are volunteers, it is outstanding. Um, and so, uh, you know, there, there's not a question in there, but, uh, but um, no, and I, and I agree. A, there is a statement. I, I agree with you, Mark. I, I, don't, I don't disagree. I've worked with Lisa and the 4-H crew since I got here, so I've been, I am just as passionate about, I, I, I'm passionate about Jefferson County, the whole of Jefferson County. So are we. So, I'm, you know, again, I'm, I think this is great. It's good to see so many folks out here supporting and, and, and letting your voices be heard. Um, and I look forward to the future as, as how we work through the, the issues. Um, I was wondering, of the other counties in Colorado, how many have debruced their general fund? All but two. So we, us in some way, and, shape, or form. Us and who else have not debruced? Weld County. Weld County. That's so, according to CCI. Does Weld County have a fairgrounds? I'm not going to yes. 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 So how, how, do, how do they make their fairgrounds work? <laughs> the same way as, not, not, not near the same way. This fairgrounds has had the highest cost recovery of any fairgrounds in the state and still does today. Um, and I'm sure that is still accurate. Um, no. But no. the highest cost recovery? Yeah. Yes, ma'am. We, yeah. we, yeah. we, we gener have been able to generate cost recovery of this fairgrounds. Um, and, and most of the other fairgrounds in the state have not been able to, um, according to the last figures I saw. Um, I think Boulder and Adams have a better cost recovery, but they've got they've got a bigger operation. What's that? We're paying a hundred dollars an hour to drag an arena across the board. It's twenty two fifty on the backs of our youth. So I mean, I ask you today. I know city government well enough to know that you're talking two thousand twenty one. We're in two thousand twenty, and that means that we are already spending the money. So how imminent are we to closing the fairgrounds? I have a youth right here. We're gonna displace 250 kids here by April 15th, based on $100 an hour. We will not be able, with the breaking news, to ask the business community to recover and support our youth to fund our rodeo. They have no faith that Jefferson County Fairgrounds is gonna be open. So you've taken this young man's opportunity participate the businesses now are saying no thank you so I don't know how to answer that any more than a hundred dollars an hour no, that's the back Jefferson so, County so um, let, let's see do, do we have any more comments from the fairgrounds advisory committee that we'd like to um, we've got a lot but I think we need to move on to the I, th I think we do too um, and, and with that um, if you're in agreement, we, we would move on, on to public You mean stop getting shot at? <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey um, I, I think you're used to, um, to uh, I am, it's not real bullets, so that's good. <laughs> so, that is real, no, that's I, real I, good. I, so, I um, so with, with that being said, I would open this up for pu public comments, and, and, and we are going to do a three minute limit uh, on public comments, um, and um, Brittany or somebody over here will let you know when the uh, when you're 36 seconds away from the three minutes um, and, and and we can raise some hands or, or we can uh, if we have a list of everybody that signed up for comments we can go off of that um, do you have that we don't have the, we do have a list of everyone that's here okay. but if you could also give us your name um, so, and then so when you address. stand up this young lady back here has had her hand up 
forever. And so, um, if you would stand up, give us your name and address. Yes, your name. And just your name. Just, name. just your name would be great. And then you'll have, you'll have three minutes. My name is Laura Burgraff. I live in Lakewood, Colorado. As a third generation Colorado native and a resident of Jeffco, the fairgrounds has provided me and countless others for a safe, fantastic place for the community to gather. I was fortunate enough to have a kid in my backyard growing up in Lakewood. I have fond memories of attending shows up here at the fairgrounds riding around. Most properties are not large enough here in Lakewood to have an arena. So fortunately, the fairgrounds have filled this much needed gap. When deciding to buy our first home, my husband and I specifically chose Lakewood due to the proximity of the Jefferson County Fairgrounds and the amenities that it provides. Nostalgia aside, I know that this is a financial decision for the county and it's not an emotional one. I won't pretend that I know how to manage a budget for a, an entire county, but a cost reduction of 90% to make this an enterprise seems absolutely ridiculous. The fairgrounds are not meant to build to become you know, an actual enterprise, a, a massive for-profit entity. That's not what fairgrounds are, are meant to be. I know there have been times where the fairgrounds have tried to increase the cost of renting the facilities. My husband used to rent the arenas four to five times a year and would have seminars here to help teach the public how to have a better relationship with their horses. We have people not only from Jeffco, across Colorado, Wyoming, Nebraska, Texas, Louisiana, Missouri, that would come up here, stall their horses, hook up their trailers, and call this their vacation because they love the fairgrounds so much. Now, the fairgrounds ended up doubling the cost for us to rent this facility about four years ago. We can no longer afford to host events here because it's cost prohibited. So now we take our business to Boulder County and Douglas County Fairgrounds, which is quite sad considering that we have this in our backyard. The indoor arena is frequently open all during the week. Um, I, I don't know if, if the people that be are setting the fairgrounds up for failure, specifically allowing them so they have more ammunition to have their case to close the fairgrounds. I know the Board of Commissioners values education uh, and educational venues. $5.4 million has been spent on uh, redoing the Belmar Library and also um, building a new one in Edgewater. But I think, I'm hoping that you're gonna see the educational value that the fairgrounds provide. You say 4-H, the FFA, this is not gonna be impacted. We all know it's a slippery slope and they will. The fairgrounds provides educational experience that you cannot learn in books. It teaches you self-respect, how to work, interpersonal s s skills. Closing the fairgrounds will rob future generations of us of this education. There's no other place like this within the, within the county. Whatever the plan is, I really hope you consider all key stakeholders, the citizens of Jeffco, whom the commissioners are elected to represent. Oh, good. Good. So in just, just, just a short blurb, in, in the interest of time, if, if somebody has already said uh, basically what you're gonna say, um, and you want to stand up and, and, and say we, we, we do that, but, but we're going to give everybody a chance to, uh, to respond if you want to. So um, let's just start around the room and why don't we start right here. Um, and then, <coughs> Excuse me, my name's Tim O'Neill. My question is a sharp one. You said reform, reduction, elimination. Will there be numbers put to each of those three options? And if so, <coughs> Could they be made a part of the uh, commissioner's newsletter so that it be disseminated and we can find out what they are? Well, those three options All right. numbers. I, I, I think this them? is going to be a public comments section. I, I think if we get too much into questions and answers, we'll be here forever. But this is a public comments form, so, so keep your comments. Uh, to three minutes and what, uh, what good is it if we can't ask questions? Yeah. We, ask questions. Just we, we, we can come and all night long just like you did and nothing happens. <laughs> we want to ask questions. Yep. We got questions. Uh, we got questions. Uh, I, I would be happy to answer, answer to the gentleman's question. Of course, we'll put together if there's analysis, there'll be numbers that are associated with it. Um, you could ask me a bunch of questions. I work for the board until a board is, I can't give you where they would go. It'd be speculation on my part. So it, depending on what your questions are, I could say that'll be up to the board. And I don't, I could repeat that a hundred times. 
um, because it is up to the board. My job is just to present the data and give them options to see what they want to do because they got to make some hard decisions. That's what y'all elected them for. Are so. we going to have the opportunity to ask the board these questions? Um, Before we do elect you to remember that. <laughs> yes, sir. I, I don't. I don't disagree. Don't shoot the messenger. So, so I, 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 think, I think the question is: at the hearings, Don, we'll have to make some decisions. Yeah. So, um, so Julie uh, Story was saying on, on online. There's, if you go to our public affairs site, there's a place where you can put your comments and your questions in. Um, and we can, and typically we get back to those folks that ask questions there. We give them answers there. So that would be one of the forms that you could ask questions. I, you know what? You know, as, as a Marine, I'm never back down from, you know, an opportunity to represent. So if you want to ask me questions, I'll answer questions as much as you want me to. I'll be here as long as you want me to be. Thank you. And, um, but I can't promise you I'll give you an answer you want to hear. Okay. So. Do you want to call? Do you want to call people, or do you want to go this one way done. around the room? Wait, wait. One done. I'm going back to rodeo practice. One done. Okay. One done. All right. So this facility should be considered. Can you get your name? Rich, Cheryl. Do you want my address? No. <laughs> <laughs> this facility is essential services. Post 9/11, County Sheriff Dara of this uh, county. Other counties, we trained in the incident management system. This is an evacuation site for livestock, for horses in the county. That is an essential service for those unfortunate events happen. And at the meeting this morning, the county commissioners all agreed, as they were talking about the development, that that is a huge problem in Jefferson County. So how can this facility not be considered essential services when you have that type of wildland urban interface three miles up the road. Um, so the answer to your question is the ability to contract for services for stabling or for pasturing for livestock or whatever. If if the fairgrounds operation was shut down, if now if that, you're conditioning that if we sold the fairgrounds, if that if we didn't sell the fairgrounds, there is no change to that plan. If we did sell the fairgrounds, we'd have to come up with a another plan of where the animals would be stopped. Does that answer your question? Okay, so I, I think, if, are you gonna do, so to do one question or like eight questions per person, I, I, again, well, I'll, I'll One answer. question per person, we're just gonna go around the room. And, and the young man right here with the glasses, if you'd like to go. Yes, sir. Uh, my name is Jaden Flynn, and I am the president of the Jefferson County High School Rodeo team. I joined the team about three or four years ago, and I came here every Tuesday night until I went to Rock Springs to the high school national last summer. Right now, up that hill in that indoor arena, we have 22 kids practicing team roping. Rodeo is alive and well in Jefferson County, and I don't want a single one of you to believe otherwise. This, if this fairgrounds is shut down, we host a rodeo every spring, and we have for a while now, as part of the Colorado State High School Rodeo Association and it's gonna displace 250 kids who come to compete in hopes of making nationals and going even further than that. Now, I just, our sponsors have no confidence in us. Uh, we go up to our sponsors as kids and we ask them if they're willing to support us and help us out while we're chasing our dreams. And we're supposed to go up to them and ask them if they will give us money to put on a rodeo at a fairgrounds that might not be here this time next year. How on earth are we supposed to do that? I just, that's pretty much all that I've got to say. If you want to see it, you can go up the hill, and I know our kids would be more than enthusiastic to tell you about how much it means to them to have this opportunity every Tuesday night. So I'd just like to thank you for your time, and I'd just like to say that I hope that it, this will continue to be available to kids in the future. It's too valuable to take it away. <laughs> Fairgrounds Advisory Board, 
Correct. Committee, serve on the advisory committee. Well, you're an advisory committee to? The commissioners. To the commissioner. So you identified $100,000 worth of cost savings. We did. So that was not under, was not considered. And then the staff recommended something else, which was, which is closing down or uh, getting rid of the fair. Right. Okay. Correct. So then maybe you need to remove advisory from your name. Because obviously no one's listening to you. I mean, I know that wasn't your question, but that's maybe not my question, but that is my statement. Thank you. My name was Carrie Miller. Thank you. And uh, I consider it a uh, <laughs> <laughs> This young man right over here had his hand up earlier. <laughs> That's kind of why you want to have the conversation early on. Because if it is something that the board decides they want to do, then there's a lot of stuff that's got to happen over the next 12 months in order to bring that fruition. If it isn't something they want to do, which is which is that that is what the desire is, then we've got to look elsewhere and, and fight for other things and get somebody else and have another meeting like this, maybe, and, or several others. There's gonna there's gonna be meetings like this about lots of different issues across the country. No doubt. I'm sorry, I have here names. We got one over here in Johnson. She still has. She yeah, I know. When can this ballot measure? When can it go up for the next vote? It would be November if the if the board decided to go with another ballot initiative. It would be in November. Did, did I? Did I? Okay. Good. How about this lady right here? Hello, um, thank you for your service anyway. Thank you. Um, I am a nurse and I work part-time in prison, and I see young men come to the and get their clothes and treat them when they're in the prison. We talk about expanding that part. When we talk about our youth, and you think about, you know, I had two kids, one in rodeo, one in Western Arizona. They did, they're both doing really well in life, and um, my son's about to join the Air Force. I'm it's been a big part of our lives and we had a good amount of people who were there to mentor my kids they grew up with a terrible dad that didn't come around and they had men that st stood up for them in this community and gave them that father figure and taught them about horses and how to be good citizens and I bring this up to you because we talked about repurposing you, you know and bringing things in here but with you know what you're looking at when you take that away from the youth is that these kids will be out on the street they will not have that father figure mm -hmm. they will have more access to doing things that are not healthy and if you, anybody knows anything about having a horse or being on a horse this responsibility is huge and it creates character and a lot of the kids that come out of here go into the military mm -hmm. so I, I would say that you really need to look at that or we're going to be ended up building another juvenile detention center on this ground mm -hmm. yeah. Exactly what you said. So, I, I thank you. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. And I'm Angela. Yes, ma'am. Uh, my name is Laura. Oh, stand up. <laughs> my name is Laura Carter. Um, I'm from Wheat Ridge, and I guess this fairgrounds. I would be one of those kids in jail right now, or I would not be here if it wasn't for the facilities here. The specs. I would have had a funeral ten years ago. Um, many of the people sitting in this room have witnessed me grow up in this facility. 
my question, because I think it's the main question that everybody has here, is what do we as a community have to do ASAP, apparently, to stop this? Because we are all for volunteering more or raising more funds because these youth do matter. Because I want to see these kids do better than I did. And I know everybody else here has the same goal to keep this facility going. So what do we as a community have to do to fix and repurpose, raise money, whatever we have to do, what do we have to do to fix this? Do what you're doing right now, let your voices be heard. Um, if the county commissioners have to make a hard choice and cut somewhere else or, or you know, let, if the, the sheriff wants to close more uh, beds and they think this is more important to them, then that's what the call will be. Um, uh, I don't know, does Boulder County, they have a, a nonprofit that runs the fairgrounds in Boulder, right? <laughs> or their fair, right? I don't, you know, um, I don't know. I mean, it, any ideas that you can come up with? I mean, short of raising enough money to, um, but even that is not, that's, that's, what, that's what property taxes are for and so forth. I mean, you can raise money and do it, which was kind of, that's the idea behind an enterprise is that the money isn't coming from 90% or less than 10% of the money is coming from the from property taxes. So, you know, I, I, you know, I don't know. I, I don't, aside from making your voices heard, um, if there's some finance, is there anybody in here that has about five or ten million dollars? That <laughs> I wish there was. But, uh, so, so make sure your voices are heard and uh, show up and submit uh, questions online through the website and and your comments. Send emails to the board of county commissioners. Um, let them know where where you stand and how you feel and how strongly it is and what it's done in your life. Share those stories with the commissioners. Make sure they hear it. How about this gentleman right here um, in the uh, green sweatshirt? <laughs> Thanks for your service. Um, my question is, you're a numbers guy. Uh -huh. and I understand. I'm not just a numbers guy. I'm a field guy, I, I too. Understand yes. that. I'm not going to get into the emotional uh -huh. aspect of this stuff. So you said property taxes <laughs> creates your revenue for your budget. In the last five or six years, my property tax has gone up at least 50%. So why is it that you guys have to rely on that Tabor ballot when you're getting more revenue? Okay, so that's a good, that's a great question. I appreciate that question. What, how much of, so every property tax dollar that, that you pay, how much of it do you think comes to the county? Uh, just, will anybody got a guess? 40%, only 24%, so 24 cents, 24, right? 24 cents of the dollar comes to the county. The rest of the stuff goes to the 50% of it, or 50% of it goes to the schools, which that doesn't come, that doesn't go to the county, that goes to the schools. So when your property tax has been increasing, it's not been increasing because of county operations related to law enforcement or detentions or safety, or transportation, or all that stuff. So only 24 cents of the property tax dollar you send, and it's probably less than that for somebody that live in special districts, because the special districts are probably, you've got a, a, even more that you're paying towards them. So the tax increase that you've been experienced hasn't, it's been because the school board has gotten ballot initiatives passed and different things, and so that, that those dollars haven't been coming to the county. You still get 24% of my increase in tax. 24 cents of your yeah. dollar. Yes, exactly. Of your assessed property tax. Increased money. And then your problem, I, I, I don't mean to take up your time, but your problem no, no. with Tabor was not, if, if you would have put it on the ballot that we need money for the Jefferson County Fairgrounds, it would have yeah. passed in a second. Exactly. Yeah. That's why yeah. 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 this was not meant yeah. to be a ballot. Yeah. That, 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 I would submit yeah. that that might be a great proposal to the, the commissioners. I will tell you that we have over $100 million worth of backlog transportation projects that we have not funded because we keep kicking that can down the road. So I, I, it's not like we're, we're fully, what's that? That's what the gasoline is. <laughs> and, and with the gas, all right, so that's a great point. And then you so, keep saying that, oh, we so let me, let me, let me explain that, sir. So the, so the highway, do you know that the non-property tax revenue that you're talking about, because the 220, that's not all property tax. That's the highway user, there's state funds that come down. 
state funds that should be coming to this county, like highway user tax funds, if that puts us over Tabor, we've got to give that money back. So that money, that money that you said that came that gets paid for taxes, we can't use it because it puts us over our limits, so we've got to give it back. So the money that other citizens, they drive through our county, they buy gas, they do things, they, they use our roads and do all that stuff, we can't keep that revenue because it puts us over. The people don't trust you with what you're doing. <laughs> I got that. I mean, I'm not saying you in general. I'm just I know. saying, if you would have said, hey, we need money for the Jefferson County Fairgrounds, you'd have had the money. So let me ask you this. Here's, here's, and this is just as a guy that worked for 27 years at the federal level, unfortunately, and I, and I say this with all honesty, there's a broad, we, we have a dysfunctional, um, federal government right now that is operating on different in different wavelengths it doesn't matter which party you're from we're not working well together and and that you see that sometimes at the state level it's been my experience that at the local level at the local government level we get broad brushed into what the federal and the state does the men and women that work at the county are every bit as patriotic as any marine sailor soldier or airman I ever led in almost 30 years I swear that on my on uh, on my children I, I mean that they work hard they're men and women just like you who are working hard they're not trying to pull another dollar out of your pocket so they can sit in the corner and eat ice cream they just they're not doing that they're working their tails off the men and women that are filling potholes that are that are that are raking the fairgrounds that are trying to keep the services here for you they're working hard at that we I can tell you if I saw any waste or I saw where the slush fund that was previously mentioned which I get it. I don't think it was necessary. I appreciate what you're saying. I, I'm not aware of slush funds. I'm not, I'm not. And I look for them all the time. Where does money move out? You have the ability to look at open gov. You can see money. You can see every down to the last penny. You can see where it's moving. I'd ask that when you look at open gov, look at the general fund piece of it because it, it gets really confusing when you look, when you look at the stuff that includes the federal dollars and the open space dollars and so forth. So. I'm, I'm with you. I don't take offense to what you're saying, and, and we're looking for every piece that we can. I, I just, I will tell you that it's a, it's, a, it's a way too complex issue to just oversimplify. It just is. So, yeah, I know. I know. It's not. I didn't make it up. I'm just living by it. You would present it to the people differently. We understand, but you'll have it. You're great. Thank, thank you. Uh, there, there are two ladies back here that have had their hands up forever, and and. Um, I would, I would like to, to, to listen to her. Okay. My name is Wendy Marshall, and I've lived in Jefferson County since 1984. And we never seemed to have these problems until we started getting into this massive growth, where we need to have more and more and more. And I'm wondering why we keep on going that way, where we need to grow and have more and do this, and then we got to have bigger jails, and we have to have more law enforcement, and all of that that comes along with it. And it seems to me that um, a few years ago when they passed the marijuana stuff, <coughs> that that was supposed to funnel money towards some activities at the state level, uh, whether that be schools or whatever. Um, and it doesn't seem to go there, which let, let, you know leaves anything else for places like this. But this didn't seem to have a problem with its operations and its running before. And we have Ted Tabor for a very, very long time. So I guess I don't understand why now. I can tell you that um, the way that the county has been functioning over the umpteen year, last few years is um, they've got revenue and then they've got a way of life that you all have come accustomed to. The reason that there's such a high demand for Jefferson County for development for people to come here is because people figured out what a treasure that you have and what a great place to live and how good the services are. People are genuinely happy. I, I know you're, you're, you're skeptical of the government and you don't trust us, but when you do, when you do a satisfaction, most people love, Je the people that live in Jefferson County love Jefferson County. So if what you said was really true, people wouldn't love living here because none of the stuff, the roads, none of that, all, it, all the things, you know, um, every time I deployed, there were people back here making sure that the roads were safe, that the water worked, that was it was healthy, that all the different things that needed to happen so that my family could continue to, to function here at home. I don't know what the answer is to the development piece, ma'am. I can tell you that we've been using our savings account over the years 
to pay to keep our level, our service level at the same level. This year, in 2020, I had predicted, when I, when I was applying for this job, I saw a wall that was coming. And the wall is here because we're at our minimum for our savings. We can't go into the savings account anymore and cover the extra money to cover the level of service that we've had. So we've got to change the level of service absent any change in revenue. And so you're right, there is an increased demand. Um, interesting statistic, the state demographer uh, told us uh, two thirds of the people that work in Jefferson County do not live in Jefferson County. That's an interesting fact, I didn't know that. Um, but that means there's more wear and tear on the roads, there's more, but it's a development in the entire Denver community, the Denver metro area. So I, I, I don't know, I know, I know um, Colorado Springs and El Paso County, probably one of the more conservative um, areas in the state. They pretty much put a ballot initiative in front of the voters now every year. They just ask a very simple question. Do you want this, yes or no? It's a, it's a very simple uh, question and the voters say yes or no. And then it happens. I mean, I think that's part, that's the benefit of the Taxpayer Bill of Rights is that you come and you ask the public for what they want to do and they get an answer. And so you get a voice. I think it's a good thing. It's not a bad thing. So, I, but I, I know that's not an answer to your question. Well, it just seems that there's more people to pay taxes. There's more houses to pay taxes. The roads are pretty much the same, but they still have more potholes than before. Um, the bridges haven't been done, and we're still paying taxes, and now you're closing down the fairgrounds. It just seems like money's coming in, sure. and there's more people bringing in money. There's more cars. There's more, um, you know, the last time I bought a car, it was way higher to get my plates than it had been previously. So it's a lot of money seems to be coming in, and now we're hearing that one of the treasured things about Jefferson County and a really strategical, important thing for emergencies, not just for animals, but for people <coughs> that get displaced from wildfires. You know, where do you go? You come down here to the campground. You know, there's showers, there's bathrooms. You can house your family here for a little bit if you have to. Um, and that has happened in Jefferson County. We've had those catastrophes <coughs> in the last 10 years, several times. So where do you put those people, you know? And well, most of them, like I said, two thirds of the people that work here don't live here. So it's not, they're, they're living, they probably can't afford to live here. It's, it's Jefferson County is more expensive. And, and, and now this other lady that was right behind you. Thank you, thank you. Um, I'm Mary Ellen Davis. Has to be tired. Mary. <laughs> Ellen Davis, I was um, incorporated at Jeffco right next to Lakewood. I just moved from El Paso County. I know a lot about that. Uh -huh. uh, we, it seems to me, I haven't heard anybody mention doing an economic economic impact study of what the fairgrounds have meant to the county and the various businesses <coughs> in the area. And I bet you'd be surprised how much this um, facility generates in tax revenue, et cetera. And those things, you are, it, it's not, you close the fairgrounds and then it doesn't cost you anything. People still have to keep up the facility to some right. degree and keep homeless people from living there, et cetera. So it's not cost free. And just like open space still costs you money to have if you're a county. And you have to maintain the building. Yeah. And <laughs> yeah. The, so with, without an economic in, impact study, and the fact that there seems to be a huge conflict between your staff and your advisory committee. <laughs> I think that that's a, a, just a red flag here. You really need to convene, and I suppose it's going to take the, the status of the county commissioners to make it happen, but to convene a group that can rethink this on a grander scale because so often the people who are in this room are not experts on events and facilities and event management except what has happened here and maybe where they were to before and this is not helpful there's lots of people in the denver area and the front range who have other ways of looking at things so i urge the county commissioners to undertake that process even though they don't want to take the time to do it because then you will have a lot more happy people here. And I think that you'll find you can do things that you didn't think you could. 
So uh, one of your members of the committee is a member of the Economic Development uh, Corporation. So I was just asking, so I think she'll go back to the EDC to see if they can do an impact study. Um, yeah, so hi, Cheyenne. Um, I'm Marketing and Communications for Economic Development Corporation here in Jeffco. Um, just a bit of background, I've been at Jeffco EDC for one year, and I've been on the fairgrounds board for three months. So, super new to all of this, jumping in at a sprint, but I'm ready. Um, so I, I hear you, I think that's what I've been saying since day one, is I want to see the economic impact study on this, the economic impact analysis. Um, and I think that, that, that you're right in, in asking for that, and it's a very logical thing to ask for. Um, so I'm glad to hear someone is thinking about economic impact. Uh, two ladies over here, a young lady back here that uh, has had a hand up forever. So my name is Mary Morento, and I'm with 4-H. But us and youth don't have a big voice in this because we can't vote. But you guys are talking about making more jails and stuff, but you don't realize that positive youth development help kids out of jail. They help kids grow and not go to jail. But you're, you're planning on taking away one of the main things for Jefferson County, one of the main meeting places. A lot of us 4-Hers, well, they have to go to different counties. That's like an hour drive. That's hard for us kids to go to other places other than the fair. <laughs> if you take that away, you're taking that opportunity away from a lot of kids and you're letting them go to the streets, letting them get into drugs, alcohol, all of that stuff when they shouldn't be doing that. If you take away the fairgrounds, you're doing that and you're just adding more and more to the jail instead of adding more and more to your future, to the youth that is your future. There's a lot of there's a couple of different components. This is um, I'm not born and raised in Colorado. Obviously, as a Marine, I've been all over the place. So it's kind of it's been new and it's been an experience to learn exactly what it means. There's two aspects to Tabor. There's a a revenue limit, but then there's also the aspect of you got to go to the people to ask for any kind of increases or any kind of adjustments. So there's two aspects to it. One is I think a very important part of the democratic process that we ask that the people be a part of that process and that we go to. The other part is um, the Tabor limit. Um, and it applies to uh, property taxes, the state revenues, the grants. Um, where there might be, so let, let's just say Forex, let's just say you wanted to apply for a grant, a grant, a state grant for $50,000. If we're at our Tabor limit, Lisa cannot apply for money that could come to our county that you paid state taxes for, that could come back to our county, and that money will, they're gonna give it to somebody, it's just gonna go to a different county. And so that money, when you hit that limit, our ability to go after funds that you've already paid into, the highway user tax fund, if you've already paid into it, which you have, and we get our cut, if that cut puts us over our Tabor limit, we can't use it. And so there's an aspect of one of the parts of 1A was to debruce non-property tax revenues. That was all rolled into one question. Um, maybe, maybe you know, there's a separate question the limit, there. How that limit comes about? So the limit at the state level is determined by consumer price index and growth in population. At the county level, it's based upon uh, CPI and new construction or new growth. So you could, you could grow 100,000 people in the county and the CPI not change, you don't get a dollar more. You don't get any more to your limit. If there's growth and there's new construction, 
then, then that kind of gets added to the equation, but it's a very slow. It's been averaging about um, 3%, 3.1%, and our spending over the last six years has been about, four, in order to maintain the level of services, has been at about a 4.67%. So there's a gap that's been there that we've been, like I said, we've been using our, our savings account to cover the gap, and now we don't have the savings account to cover it anymore. And so anything above that 3.1, we get back. Basically, yeah, anything above what we're allowed to keep, we have to give back, yes. Or, yes. And so again, there's no incentive to go after grant dollars that you would be able to get from the state because even though that's TABOR limited, it gets limited, we've already got our limit and, and we can't use it. So, does that answer your question? Yeah. yeah. You have a lady right here? So, my name is Kayla. Um, I've been in 4-H for probably like 10 years now. And I know a bunch of the kids in this room are also part of that organization, along with quite a few others that would, like stay here at the fairgrounds. These fairgrounds have became a home to us, and this is where we are most comfortable, and this is where we've made more friends. We've made so many memories here. Another thing is, is like, I'm in a market project, and I know there's quite a few other people in here as well that are in a market project, and we depend on the fairgrounds to hold our auction at the end of the year with having that. What happens then if we don't have a fairgrounds to have that auction, how do we have those market animals? How do we expect to sell them? Like, it just impacts us a lot. So that's my it, it would It would be something that, again, if we if the fairground operations were to, to be decided to not do it, we would do everything that we need to do to work with CSU Extension to find an alternate location to still make sure, to, to be clear, nobody is saying that 4-H goes away. Yeah. I mean, I, I mean, there, there's nobody saying that. And, you, and while there is a lot of stuff that happens here, there's a lot of stuff that happens across the county and schools and, and different places. So um, we would work with other partners to try to figure out where we do those other locations. So I, I, I know that the activity that happens here, if the board made the decision to shut down fairground operations, CSU still exists. <coughs> 4-H yeah. still exists, and we still have a we still have a desire to work out those arrangements to yeah. figure out where we do it. I just know that the Jeffco kids do depend on these grounds. Yeah. So we want to do everything. I won my first. I, I love seeing y'all with your belt buckles because I got one too that y'all helped me win so. when I was showing my first sheet. <laughs> <laughs> There's a Thanks lady back here against the wall with a yellow sweatshirt on that uh, her arms about to fall off. So, I, I would um, like to <coughs> understand how you determine what is essential government funds. Because you use the term that, you know, you're saying that building a new courthouse is essential. Having more jail space is essential, but having a youth program is not considered essential? Okay, so I apologize. I don't mean to say... I don't mean to say it's not essential. It was about, I think what I was trying to say is those things that only government can do. There are lots of, 4-H provides services and leadership opportunities for um, kids. There's other organizations, other nonprofits that work with children that, Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, all of those types of programs that help provide that. None of those programs, I don't know of any civilian or outside government that can run a jail or uh, execute law enforcement or build our roads or anything like that so when I talk about it's not so much essential non-essential it's most it's about prioritizing those things that only government can do. Uh, okay, so our, our forefathers had the foresight to set aside this piece of property and to build a foreground with the mission statement that this is for youth for recreation etc how is it that we can justify saying oh yeah well we're just going to blow all that off and not provide that for the future for the youth that are coming up behind us hey, it's it's um we've got to have the, the, the first obligation is to our statutory requirements to do the things that government must do and then that, and as long as you got enough money to do all that stuff that leaves some left over to do the stuff that you like to do and the stuff you ought to do but when the budget gets tight, you've got to start figuring out what it is that you like or you ought to do that has to come off the list. Mm -hmm. I just, I, and, I, and again, don't don't misinterpret. I, this is not a final decision. This is it. I'm looking across the county at all of the things that need that we're looking at. 
um, we're looking at those types of things. So, yeah, I want to know what else you're looking at. What else is on the chopping block, first of all, and then I want to know how unincorporated Jefferson County plays into all of this. Everything. Everything's on the chopping block. Dude, that's why we're closed to floor of the jail. If every if you close a floor of the jail and every that puts everything on the board, everything. We're looking at everything. Elected officials, they've got to look at everything. Last year, for the 2020 budget, we put out a 7% across the board cut, and nobody was immune to it. That was after we looked for uh, things. We initially had predicted there would be a 10% need through some th through uh, efficiencies and looking at and, and, and working on things. Got that down to 7%. Then I gave that out as across the board. That didn't go over too well. So the safety piece got brought down to 3.5%. We did some one-time savings. There was a sale of a building that resulted in an $8 million that we were able to apply one time for 2020. So the answer to your question is everything's on the board, everything. So will we have Does that answer notice? your question, ma'am? Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry. Will we have noticed more than like a week as far as what other stuff is gonna be on the chopping block? It's all part of the process. We will not finalize the 2021 budget until November or October. So this is all part of the process. We are only in January and we're just talking about the possibilities and we're talking about and we're looking at everything. And, and to the extent that we can all look at it simultaneously, it's coming up as it's coming up. So um, this is part of the public dialogue. This is not a final decision, not even close. So is there a difference between incorporated and unincorporated Jefferson County? Uh, yes, incorporated means that there's within a city. And so the no, city No, I has understand that, but in your viewpoint, in funding and what you're looking at. Hmm. I don't know, I, don't, I guess I don't fully understand the question because we don't separate the, but we, the budget we get in is to provide some services go to everybody. Some services are just for unincorporated um, Jefferson County, right? So. Um, the sheriff does law enforcement in unincorporated Jefferson County, but he runs the jail for the entire county. Um, so I, I don't know how you really separate that out. The, the statutory requirements, every citizen of a city is also a citizen of the county. So there are some, uh, if you're a citizen in a city, then you probably get the benefits of both the county and the city. Um, if you're out in unincorporated Jeffco, then you, or or the or the penalties, if depending on which city that you live in, that you might feel differently. But um, so does that kind of it weighs equally? Yeah. There's a gentleman back here. Uh... <coughs> yep. Okay. Um, my question is: I'm going to the paper and, and talking about the facility and costs going up. <coughs> So let's just say we have a horse event up here. There's ten thousand dollars to rent the facility for the weekend. Now talking about the paper thing, we have a deal there. If they do pay the ten thousand dollars to rent the facility, okay, where does that money go back to? Is that end up putting us over budget, or you know, we're talking about having a And the answer to your question is yes, it does put us over. That's why I look at while it may be one point eight million dollars, and let's just say the fairgrounds makes five hundred thousand. That, that still, that tariff 1.8 counts because that revenue could be made up somewhere else and be used to fund the jail. Any revenue that's made here is, it stays here. It doesn't go somewhere else. It, 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 it helps, you know, um, right now I think we're subsidizing from the general fund about, what, 700? Yeah. About $700,000 is subsidized for the total, right? So that goes towards the, no, it's a little bit more than that. Isn't it? <coughs> 1.3. 1.3 $1 million dollars is subsidized from the general fund, and then the rest of it is covered by the revenues that the fair generates. Um, that money, and because, that's why I wanted the team to look at an enterprise. I know people will say, well, it shouldn't be an enterprise. I appreciate the comment that was made earlier, but I was just trying to look at, think outside the box. <laughs> on the other side, it doesn't make sense to me on talking about people who having to go elsewhere to do things. This is our fairgrounds in Jefferson County would make it so unaffordable that we won't use it and then say that it's dying because nobody can afford it. Yet anything you collect is going to go above 
with the laws that we have now, it seems common exactly. to us. Well, if we, I, I, I don't disagree, but if, if we were to lower the price and we could get enough demand mm -hmm. that would allow us to make 90% of what it costs, mm -hmm. then it could be, it could come off the books. So, you know, I, I own and operate a business up the street from here. Uh -huh. I grew up here. I raced on a racetrack that used to be where the seventy was building and did four A and all of this. Um, and here lately, the facility has become harder and harder to use, and what does become available is less and less. And I also belong to a truck pulling association that we tried to put some events on here. And we did our own advertising. We brought our own equipment, and we showed that we could make revenue on this. Mm -hmm. And every time we showed that we could make more, the county wanted more to the point where it wasn't affordable to do this and those kids races to show up. And without the races, we can show up with the True. I think there's other. I, I mean, yes, we try to book the venue in terms of booking the the different things. Um, you know, it, it, the goal is to fill the calendar. Right, and that was part of and part of the RV. A lot of the venues, you probably know this, when you go to a venue like that, a lot of those folks are RVing, so they need a place to stay. So part of getting those events in is having the RV uh, area available. What had happened been happening in the past is we didn't have, if we had everything rented out, people wouldn't book shows or book with us because they didn't have the RV space available for their participants in the show. That seems kind of productive on a business. Yeah, no, I, don't get me wrong. We, we tried it for, and, you know, and that's one of the partnerships that was being looked at in terms of trying to see where, if we could increase the revenue to the point where we could break even or come close to break even. And that's part of like, could we partner with Red Rocks because they have concerts and stuff like that. The RV park generates revenue, but what does that have to do with 4-H and equestrian and, and those types of things. Other than generating, the goal there is to try to generate. How much of we have at the fairgrounds this year? It used to be full. Yeah. There was no slack run here. The overflow and the parking in. Why do we have none of that when all those are empty? And what do we have booked that we're hoping to get? That's right. This year, unfortunately, we've only had eight stops or reservations. So, 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 so part, part, part of what you're seeing is a stock show that is booming and growing. And, and going somewhere else with their horses and they, ha they have more room. So, but um, this fairgrounds um, has, has to service venues like a rodeo coming in with RV sites, like Mr. Davis was talking about, um, and, and not just an RV site um, for the public and compete with commercial enterprise. But the um, making revenue, if you leave the place empty and only put no, the I, I, I understand. that they would fill, Kind of I, 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 you just say, hey, I'm sorry, we're full. There's other places that they can go, like these people have been forced to go to Arapahoe and Boulder County right. and this and that. But it's very mismanaged in the business sense. Yeah. 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 You know, I, I would I would say what we were charging before when it was full was like it was and, and here's the other part of it is if we if you got private organizations, if you're an owner of an RV lot and now I'm competing with you by underwriting. I'm, I'm driving the prices down so that I keep my lot. So we've looked at it in the full business sense. We're, we're trying to do it the best way that makes that. If we could make it to where um, we could make money on the RV lot, it's just not enough to put us over the threshold that we would need. And then you've got fairground staff that are devoted towards that and not towards the equestrian or towards the ag piece. That you know, when you do your open ride, you all that stuff, and you want, and and the crowd's going to be uh, so dragged and stuff. Yeah. Why wouldn't we do everything we can to look in every direction to accomplish that? And we, we have been. We have been. That's why there's. We have been. That's why there's everything from pinball tournaments to 
of WWE matches to, I mean, we're hosting everything that could possibly be hosted out here. So I don't disagree with that, but we are doing it. No, and I appreciate what you're, where you're coming from, but but I think you, you have to look at the overall picture and I'd love to sit down with you and, and, and to this Fairgrounds Advisory Committee has, has, this Fairgrounds Advisory Committee has looked at it over and over again to try to make this Fairgrounds the most profitable we can because we want to keep this Fairgrounds. But we're going to move on because uh, we're, we're doing one question per person and I'm going to go right here to this lady right here. Hi, um, so it's concerning to me that we're bifurcating the conversation about what would happen to the land if the fairgrounds is closed from the operations of the fairgrounds. And we're talking a lot about this like $1.8 million number is what you're trying to cover. But in your considerations about potentially closing the fairgrounds, are you also looking at the money that you could make, the county could make, if it sold the property, you said it was like valued up to $22 million, or if it relocated, because it seems like there's more here than just I trying would, to break even at one point eight million dollars. Yeah. Right. So, what we're trying to do, the twelve and a half million dollars, what we're trying to do is is get ongoing cuts. So when I look at fair, fairground operation, is one point million, one point eight million dollars every year. So we're trying to cut operating costs. So think about it in terms of, um, you know, you're running your house and you want to save water. So you stop, you, you're, you're saving, it, you need to use water all the time. So you're trying to make some savings on your day-to-day -day operations. Um, if we sold the fairgrounds, which I would, that, that isn't on my radar because I'm not recommending, that wouldn't be something I recommend. Yeah, that's what I, is, is, that what, is that what this is ultimately getting to? Like is the goal that's not to what sell I'm recommending, no. That's not what I'm recommending. That doesn't, I'm not saying though that that wouldn't be a conversation at some point down the road if the fiscal situation doesn't get better. I, so I can't, I can't definitively tell you no. I can tell you, and I can look at you in the eye, that I am not promoting the sale of the asset for a one-time gain. It is just us, that would be one more kicking the can down the road without addressing the ongoing, we need to reduce the services or the level of service. If we've got Cadillac, we need to go down to Chevy, and I apologize to any Chevy owners out there. <laughs> not being, but but that's just the easiest thing that I can say. So so no, um, we're trying to look at operating costs. Those things that are recurring, we need to find twelve and a half million dollars. That's why we're looking at the operations. I'm not looking for one-time savings, which would be you sell the fairgrounds. There's a one-time benefit, but it doesn't help you right. with the there's ongoing costs. Does right. that answer your question? Yeah, it does. Okay. There's a lady right over here uh, on the wall and then we'll walk. Um, question four, um, a statement. Why was there such short notice to the community? <laughs> Um, because I don't, I don't, I, 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 I live in okay. this neighborhood. So I'm not the looking. Fairgrounds being shut down will affect the neighborhood. It, also. it, it would. Yeah. I want to talk about, so there, you, you know, um, Bad news never gets good with age, okay? So I'm not about dragging this out and then where we get to a crunch time. So we're very, like I was, I stated early, in October, November, I think by no, actually December is when we have to have it by the state, but we have a goal of having our budget for 2021 <coughs> finalized or in front of the board to make a decision in October timeframe. So I don't look at January being dumped on it. I realize it's a shock to the community, but this is part of the process. This is me calling the president last week, letting him know so I can come here, we can invite the public, we can talk about it. I'm gonna brief the board, it's not a hearing. Then they'll wanna hear more about from the people. So I see this, this isn't short. Please don't look at this as short notice. This is me trying to talk to you in January about decisions that won't be made until October. And then with that, is there a way to have more of the public's input with the advisory committee on things that could happen at the fairgrounds to bring in revenue. Uh, um, I, of course, I mean, like I said, there's you can everybody can go home tonight and submit their um, their comments online, and they can send emails to the commissioners, which is what I would encourage. And um, we'll continue to work through this process over the next several months. So, yes, does that answer your question? Yeah. There's a lady right here in the red zone. Um, you know, I looked at the budget and all the wonderful information that the county puts out for the public, and I noticed that in 19, in, two, 19, in 2017, 
cost recovery for the fairgrounds was 48 percent that's almost 50 percent in 17. and then i look and see the 18 budget amount which is only 40 percent i don't see any actual for 18 in that in what i spoke today and of course 19 is the budget was 42 percent I don't, couldn't, 19's not out yet, I'm sure. We don't have any audit yet for that. So I guess instead of, I appreciate what you're saying, that there's a way to, to get over the deficit by cutting, cutting, cutting. But there's also ways to get over the deficit by increasing income, making more money. And the fairgrounds is a tremendous facility for just that. And I think in, 19, in 2017, for the 48%, is a real good example of yes it almost it's 50 percent almost so why don't we do something like research what happened in 17 find out why it happened that way what did they do in 17 that caused it to be 50 percent almost and then make it even better than that and see if we can bring the income level up but to bring it up to 90 percent is literally shocking to me because I don't know of any kind of a facility that's a recreational facility that's ever expected to pay for itself to 90%. Yeah. But I mean, we got something right here that's this was almost 50%. So let's get off the cut and get on the income level. Income back. <laughs> Great point, ma'am, uh, and I don't disagree with it. Me asking the fairgrounds to look at the enterprise option was me thinking outside the box to the point of what you're saying. Look at something, something crazy. Is it possible? Um, we even looked at how Vetcher Mansion could be rolled into the equation because that's part of our events and venues, but it just wasn't enough there um, and, and, and to help out enough. Um, I think there was a couple of different accounting changes. What what happened in 17? So we did close the campground. So that was the large revenue driver because at that time, um, um, the, the fairgrounds, <laughs> the, the campgrounds were closed down in order to accommodate events. the events that were coming here so that the RV lots were available to the events that came. Yeah. So once again, but go back to my earlier points of uh, generating revenue is not, I, if I'm already at my limit, generating revenue doesn't allow me to solve the problem. It's still, unless- well, and Why not? Because there's a- that, No, but, but it's works off the budget. Because ma'am, that goes into the total budget. And if we're already here, any revenue that we generate over, we have to give back. I, 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 it really is, I mean, we're not- is a long way from 100. It's a long way from what? It's a long way from 100%. It is, yes, ma'am. Okay, um, there's a lady right here. Uh, Hi, Ms. Mary Taylor. I'm a 42. Okay. I'm concerned about what I heard you say earlier. You found money that could have been cut. You've already cut the fare the 4 acres are doing. The county is not. I would like to know when the last forensic accounting was done for this organization. Well, ma'am, we'll, 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 we'll go back and look at Mark's. There's, it's a, I, I'm I, a business owner. I have to balance my budget. Yes, ma'am, and that's why we're and here. And I would like to see that because this is important to not only the youth, but the community. I've lived in Jefferson County since 1983. I moved here specifically to this county. They had the number one school. They had a good agriculture program, and now they're gone. Do something about it, and don't make us all suffer. Gentleman back here with the glasses on. Yeah, I just had a question about the impact on agricultural families in the county. I mean, Servicing families with horses, sheep, cattle. What's going to happen to them when the agricultural hub of the county is no longer available to you? Good question. 
I don't have an answer for that. I, I'd have to, in, in terms of the level of business, what percentage of the fairgrounds business or revenue is tied to A in the question? So in 2019, 8.7% of our business was at 30 point. And I guess back in the 80s or 90s, it was... That I don't know. It was I better. I, I know it was better it was than better. I think it was in the 70 percentile. So, and this is that's a phenomenon that's happening so, so, nationwide so relative to fairgrounds. So, if I can answer your question, Don, okay. I, I think I think what 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 we've seen is in an effort to generate more income to this fairgrounds, um, they've had they they've um, they diversified diversified to to a lot of other venues. That are willing to pay higher dollars than agricultural users are. But remember, this fairgrounds, the mission statement includes ag, um, youth, and recreation for the uh, county as the um, specifics for this facility under the mission statement. Um, but but that did generate more um, commercial use of the fairgrounds um, other than ag because of the, the rates went up. Um, and so um, we, we, we walk a fine line in trying to raise our ag and keep our ag and youth and protect that. And I think that's very, very important. And at the same time, we have to raise revenues to pay for <laughs> the fairgrounds to, uh, to get, the, get our cost. So, so about 25 years ago, we went through the same thing as we went through, we're going through right now with Tabor. Um, the commissioners at that time charged us with cost um, revenue, cost um, um, revenue um, program, and that is when we, the, the Fairgrounds Advisory Committee, had to start raising money to increase the cost revenue or the uh, cost, re recovery. cost recovery to offset our expenses because of the Tabor. They never talked about shutting the fairgrounds at that time, and we were able to work our way through it with cost recovery, and we were able to get up to 48% cost recovery. Um, but again, in the process of trying to um, to raise money, sometimes we end up losing what this fairgrounds is all about, and that's what I don't want to see happen at all. And I sure don't want to see it go away um, because we can't uh, operate it at all. So. There's a question back here against the wall. Um, Tiffany Mead, uh, of Westminster. I'm one of the 4-H leaders in the county. Um, I understand we're talking about the Tabor and going over what we're allowed to have. Looking at other counties, looking at other programs, fairgrounds, I'm gonna pick on Larimer County. If we were able to find a long-term named sponsor for the fairgrounds, is that a viable option or would we have to give that money back? under the Tabor things that we've been talking about. We have tours in our backyard, we have multiple car dealerships in our backyard. Is that a potential option that we could investigate? I, you know, um, the answer to that question was yes, which is again why we had looked at that, that, that enterprise piece because the sponsorship and that, that, that type of income, that absolutely could. No, I, I, that's absolutely. That's why I asked the question early. I mean, I know it was tongue in cheek a little bit, but has anybody got a few million dollars that we could pour into this program? Are there some business leaders and some folks in the community that believe enough in the program that are willing to put some money behind it that would allow us to do that? So I asked the specific, go ahead, Brian. I was just gonna tack onto that too, that um, that is absolutely true, but it would still need to be within an enterprise fund self-sustaining for that revenue to stay with the fairgrounds. Does that make sense? No. Sort of. If there is a way that you guys can give us like information on that, four H leaders and kids, we they have very cute faces and we make them uh, pedal them around a lot. Um, and particularly looking at uh, Larimer County, they have Budweiser. Would there be any hindrance if we did not fan like a rec pot company, but if we went to like I don't know, like Belgium or Coors or something that is in the adult realm like that would that be something that's hindered because the fairgrounds mission statement is about youth just so we have we, we like a framework that we can kind of figure out that we can bounce around those frames rather than just like hey 
marijuana yeah. wants to sponsor our fairgrounds, obviously that's off the table. I, I think, I, I mean, um, I think anything's on the table. I mean, I, I don't want to defer to my um, to my lawyers, but uh, to the county's lawyers, they're not mine. They <laughs> I can't take ownership. Um, no, I mean, if uh, it worked for Sports Authority, of course, they went out of business. We don't want to use them. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, I, I think anything is within the realm of the possible. I mean, it would be great if the Coors family would say, we want to make sure we want, we want the court. It wanted to be the chorus fairgrounds or something. I, I'm, and I'm please, I'm not. I'm, that's, uh, don't don't quote me. You know, all, all the cameras are. Busy. But um, but so I think that's within the realm of the possible, and we can discuss that more. Yeah, if you guys can get us something like that. Um, our kiddos obviously fundraise for a thousand and one things every month of every year. But if there's like some specific parameters that we have to stay in, yeah. that would be that could obviously be a thing that we usually push. So, our so what it would have to be, just to, just for clarification, <laughs> it would probably be something that would need to be a, a contract that would go multi years, okay, yeah. that would that would result in a steady stream of revenue, something that is every. We beat on the doors of folks every every year. That that would be that would be, I mean that that would be a, a, not a sustainable revenue stream. But having a, a commitment yeah. for five, seven, ten sure. years, yeah, yeah. whatever it is, absolutely. Yeah, we can get something like that that we can bring back to our board. Yeah, we'll have the staff work with the That'll advisors to make on that. Ladies and gentlemen, back here in the back. Just got a quick comment. First of all, the enterprise fund issue, those other items are not Don's fault. It's not the commissioner's fault. Talk to your state legislators. That's where the problem is between Gallagher, the school, the whole tax situation is a complete mess. And until the legislature fixes that, all of the rest of this is really tough. But my question is a little technical. If you were forced to close the fairgrounds down, what happens to the people that currently have easements or leases on the property? Um. So uh, I don't those those stay in place. So if we're talking specifically about the easement that's with Western Airs, that that is with the property and that is that stays. That doesn't go anywhere. So you know I don't know, Steve. Did you want to add anything? No, that's to that? the case. I mean, the, the easements are there whether we own the property or not. Right. If it, I, I think if we sold if the prop if the property was sold, I'm not suggesting it, but if it was, the easement goes with it, right? Now is the Animal shelter and easement, or how is that? Uh, it's a, that was a loan. Yeah, the, there are there aren't any easements on that because it's still part of the county, uh, working with the um, the you know that organization. So that that wouldn't be an issue, as far as I know. Does that answer your question? It does. Okay. My only comment is, if you want to get something changed, put the heat on the state, the state legislators, both the Senate and the representatives, because. They're the ones who are going to have to make changes, and then they've got to bring it to the vote of the people because Tabor is just, it's a rat's nest. There's a lady here. Uh... Me? Okay. Uh, my name's Nancy Palazzi, and um, I have been part of the fairgrounds uh, my entire life. <coughs> so um, I want to kind of let you know I'm going to throw out some numbers here um, in terms of some things that have not been really said. Um, so there's been a lot of uh, real wasteful spending that's happened here in the fairgrounds here in the past few years. Um, I'm going to go back. Back in 2015, I actually went to the commissioners and asked them if I could bring back the Festival of the West, which is something that my family did for 25 years. Um, and instead of doing that, uh, which was a nonprofit and we would take care of all the expenses, the county commissioners decided to start the, the fair and the festival. So in, the, in 2016, the fair and festival went on. They had a budget of $300,000. They went over budget. That was $400,000 they spent on the first year. Second year was $400,000. They went over half a million dollars. And it continues on. Their budget last year was a half a million dollars. So that is unbelievable amounts of money, of our money, that has been spent on a fair and festival. Now, I'm not saying that that's not worth it for the children and the people that are part of it. I'm a 4 h -er myself. Um, and I totally agree with doing things for the 4-H'ers and the youth in this community, but that is obscene amount of money that was spent on it for no reason. There was a person who was hired in just to do that, who's still on the payroll, but the fair and festival is now gone. So why is he still there? Right. Um, go with that. Um, 
I've been part of fairgrounds and fairs and festivals my whole life. There is not one fair out there that is a profitable fair, um, period. It's nowhere. Not even World's Fairs are profitable. Um, and for have a, a 90% cost recovery is absolutely unrealistic for the fairgrounds. There's no county um, that has that ability to do that. Now, I'm also um, a vendor here. I am, um, I'm a caterer. I do things here at this fairgrounds. In fact, I was just here this weekend with the, the postcard show and serving food. So the costs have gone up substantially here in the fairgrounds for the past four years. And give an example of the truck pull that went on. What he was talking about is the fact that they did a very successful truck pull the first time. Then they came back and the fair or the, the county wanted to have more money, another percentage of money because it was so successful. All of us went back. And we want a percentage of the beer and alcohol sales as well. So there was a lot of this finagling back and forth with these venues, the big venues that were coming in, and they've all went away. There's really not much here because of the poor management that has been going on. Now, I'm not, ta I'm not talking about you all, ladies. I love you guys. You've worked well with me in terms of that. I am not saying anything about that, but it is poor management, period, and it funnels down from the, the county. Um, and I'm going to throw out a name. His name is Tom Hobie, and he was the one that started this and it has gone on and when now these vendors have restrictions do you know that you can't buy a pepsi here in the fairgrounds you yep. gotta buy coke and they only get ten thousand dollars a year from coke but you can't have a pepsi so anybody who wants to have an event here and who wants to bring in a, a dr pepper so the other thing i have one question now how come i was timed and other people weren't that's because of me so the other thing is, <laughs> I'm going to say one thing. I have a question here. If you have a question here. to ask, I'm going to ask I have a question for Don. My question is, until last year, the fairgrounds was under open space in the budget. How come after last year it was switched over to the events and venues, and now we're no longer part of open space? Yeah. So when it was under open space... When it was open, under open space, it wasn't being paid for, to be clear, with open space dollars. It still was a general fund expense. So who it answered to, whether it answers to Tom Hovey or events and venues um, in terms of a, a larger venue. What, what, what I was trying to do um, in that process was to figure out how uh, Fetcher Mansion might be able to help out the fairgrounds. If that revenue that we've got at Fetcher Mansion, which is a venue, if I could get it to the point where I wanted to look at a larger, when you talk about diversing, diversifying the portfolio, bringing some more stuff in to try to work hand in hand. Um, so that was the thought behind that. Um, it had, didn't change any, it didn't change any of the funding because the money wasn't coming from open space. Uh, open space is prohibited from spending money on things outside of what their purview is. So Tom made real sure that we didn't spend open space dollars on Fairground operation. So then where was the money that came from uh, for the fair and festival? Where, where did all that money come from then if it wasn't open From the general fund. I would like to speak to the fair and festival members as well, just to clarify. In 2019, our budget for the Jeffco Fair and Festival was $184,000. Um, we spent on our budget $183,750. <coughs> In 2019, the budget for the Jeffco Fair and Festival was $184,000. We spent $183,750. So I just want to clarify that number. There was not half a million dollars spent on the Jeffco Fair and Festival. Yeah, but the math doesn't have to use the 70000 We made the money. So there was a loss of about 70,000. Yeah, there, there, there was a loss with the current festival, and uh, and we knew there'd be losses at the current <laughs> festival um, until until we got to a point where we could hopefully make a profit. Um, and un unfortunately, um, the commissioners chose to uh, to end the funding on it. Um, but um, um, with that being said, there's a lady back here, a young lady back here with her arm up and another one back here against the wall. Um, but if you'd like to go first, uh, right here in the purple sweatshirt, your, yeah, your arm has been up forever. Okay, my name is Kevin Matashek. I was born in Nevada and moved to California, and I'm here. 
all three states that we're going to dealt with the horses. Um, so I think my, my proposal is when, when I think of Colorado, right? I think I think of horses. I think of um, the fairgrounds themselves, and it's like um, it's almost like if you're thinking if you're a tourist and you're thinking of California and you don't see any palm trees, what the heck? It's just an eucalyptus. What's up with that? So I feel as though um, we need to uh, almost as like in order to keep the community we have in the. I forgot my point. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're right. We are an agricultural community with a Western heritage. That's not going on. I think the Western stock show speaks volumes to that. So I, I agree with your point that the fairgrounds is a jewel in the sense that it advertises and it speaks equestrian and agriculture. Thank you very much. Uh, there's a lady back here against the wall, and then there's another young lady here in the middle. Um, I'm a Youth 4-H member, and I would like to say that where is college going to go? Because 4-H is an agriculture industry, and more than that, it's also technology. And with 4-H, we earn money and scholarships. Well, if the fairground goes, 4-H can go easily. And that's how we, as 4-H members, get our scholarships. Where is college going to go? Where is agriculture going to go? Hi, my name is Christy here. Um, I've grown up on the fairgrounds since I was literally two weeks old. Um, there were points, I guess, where I didn't know what I would do with my life, and then I figured out that riding my horse at the fairgrounds once a week would be able to let go of all of the stress on school, the problems at home, if there were any, and <laughs> sometimes, I guess, uh, it was the only thing sometimes that a lot of us kids that are here had to hope for for that week was riding our horses out here um so if you let go of if you sell or do whatever with the fairgrounds that doesn't help us who are trying to keep ourselves here um we're going to have to drive a lot longer a lot farther away uh to go to ride our horses to do anything like that and it might end us where we might have to sell our horses sell our sheep our cattle um, because we can't always go once a week an hour or up to two hours away uh, so i guess that's a big problem um, is giving away our fairgrounds or selling or, or whatever um, what are we gonna do with a bunch of people growing up? I mean, the industry is everything. Uh, the cattle brings in stuff like meat, uh, so does pigs. Um, so I guess it's a big problem. Okay, I'm Frank Blaha from Golden, Colorado, and I want to say thank you for the meeting, uh, but it was really a very short time to prepare for this. When I first heard about it, I was kind of incredulous. Who, who would be talking about shutting down the fairgrounds? And much to my surprise, it was really a possibility that's being put on the table. And it's rather impossible to prepare for a meeting like this with only about 24 hours of notice and no written documents. I mean, there's, th this was all like through social media. I'm not a social yeah. media guy. And yet, here it is, and here I am at this meeting. Impossible to prepare for it. I just want to say the fairgrounds are critical to the community fabric, critical to the youth, critical to the horse and the agricultural community. And we need to see some written proposals about what you're intending to do and the different options that we should be considering. 
because of, you know, the way this meeting, what I heard about the meeting and what we've been talking about is kind of shifting from here to there. And I think we need to see some written proposals because our paper is about government in the sunshine. And I feel like this one's kind of murky. And I would really like to see written proposals for us to respond to. And I will say I am a taxpayer in Jefferson County. And I'm here with my friends from Jefferson County Horse Council on the right. I've got Western Air people all around me. I've been involved with the <laughs> I'm sure I've spent thousands of hours at this fairground, you know, supporting different activities and participating in different <coughs> activities. And we need time to respond to this idea and to these different options. And if usage, uh, the, if the usage percent used to be 48 percent, I'm sure we can get it there again. If that's a magic <coughs> number, if that's at all helpful, because I think you said earlier that uh, it was 28 percent most recently cost recovery. And then the plan they came up would get us up to. 57%? Well, okay. So, but I think we need to see some written proposals for this. Um, I think there's reasons revenues and the cost recovery from the fairgrounds would have been down in the last couple of years, especially the vesicular stomatitis virus that was a big outbreak last year and I believe in 2018 too. I know of events that were canceled that would have been at this fairgrounds of a horse nature because of the VSB. So I'm sure there's reasons that they were down. And seconds. simply stated, I feel that I and my family were opposed to closing the fairgrounds. I think that the horse community would be very opposed to closing the fairgrounds or reducing its facilities. It's a unique facility for these people. And I, I just want to be on the record saying that. Thank you. Thank you. I just have, I have a question. Why the advisory committee was not notified sooner of this situation? They're there for that reason. The, I feel like the Skeltons, yeah. we've, we've all known that family, and they have a vested interest in this community. And obviously have some suggestions about finding money. And I'd like to see really the commissioners as well as the county manager to work with this advisory committee. Yes ma'am, that's why I'm here. Like I said, this is a, the process is not finalized until October. So the results of the election were until the middle of November. So in terms of um, timing, you know, I, if this commission feels like this is a, you know, you're surprised, my apologies, <laughs> that that's not what it's meant to do. It's meant to start the conversation. This is exactly what we hoped for that we would get a public outcry, that there would be a conversation, and that there would be a dialogue. So this is, this is, you know, it's not a surprise. Uh, it's not meant to be a surprise in terms of we're making a decision within a week or two, or you don't have the chance, sir, to look at data. That's, that's absolutely what's gonna come out. And the sooner that you know about it, the sooner you know that it's even being talked about, the sooner you can do something about it. And, and that means I need to be willing to come here and take all the shots so that we can have a conversation and you can and we can hear you. Um, uh, how about this gentleman right here? My name is Gary Messick, and I've lived here in Jeff County since 1962. Uh, my question is for Donna, yes. He said you get $100,000 out of his program. You could generate up with $100,000. You said 7% across the board cuts. You already had that suggested or you look at that seven percent across the board why did you exempt the uh, law enforcement down to three and a half you said they you reduced what they were, were going to put in why didn't everybody cut seven percent across the board um because the outcry <laughs> from the safety folks a Every bunch of folks outcry. like you uh, didn't want to see two floors of the jail closed because that's what the sheriff was saying if he had to have the full cuts which is kind of what he's looking at in 2021 um, there was a public outcry. There was a lot of folks that were screaming um, right into the commissioners and so forth and, and, and saying that's too much. Don't put it on the back of law enforcement. Our communities, want to, we want them to stay safe. We want them to do all these things. And so that adjustment was made. Now that adjustment was made with the full understanding that if we don't, if the ballot doesn't pass, then the rest of it has got to come. So um, 
we're looking at 2021 with a fresh set of eyes um, to talk about all the things that we can possibly do. And that means everything. So when the lady asked earlier about what's on the table, everything's on the table. Can I respond to that? Uh huh. That's kind of the attitude is I cut programs, but don't cut mine because mine's essential. Everybody says that. Yeah, you're exactly right, sir. And, that, and I will tell you that there's no, the sheriff has over 50% of the general fund budget. The DA adds another 20 some odd million dollars. They're gonna, whatever we can't find, there's not a lot left after that. So whatever we can't find elsewhere, it's going to them. They're not gonna avoid cuts. It's just how deep the cuts are gonna go to them. Nobody is gonna, nobody's safe for this. Nobody's safe for 2021, nobody. Nobody. Everybody will feel pain across the board. Including citizens. Now, um, <laughs> well, again, I, so so to your point, sir, I mean, if we've got Cadillac services and we've been providing them at a 4.67% spend rate, we can't keep doing that. So we've got to figure out what services are reduced. It just, it has to happen. The same services can't be done with well, less money. What services are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, I have a long time. tell you that we spend the lion's share of that in public too and that comes at a price if we're gonna um, this is something that I've seen a lot of folks in unincorporated areas want the kind of response times that you might see in a city that comes at a cost the safety of the community the sheriff and the DA that's that's a majority of the general fund budget so I mean I, I don't know how else to say it I, I'm with you though. I'm with you. Thank you, Mr. McDonald. I agree. I'm just gentleman right here. Have you guys looked at public private partnerships? I've worked in the sports industry for 18 years. I've been the general manager of facilities operations at Red Rocks. I've worked at Madison Square Garden. I ran the University of Connecticut football and basketball facility. Worked for Tampa Bay, <coughs> Tampa Bay Lightning. A lot of these organizations have public public private partnerships and some things may go downhill may cost a little more for a pepsi or something like that but there's ways to work it out when i was at university of connecticut football stadium which is part of the capital region development authority we started at 50 events in 2005. outside events we had seven football games a couple other concerts a couple other things we started at 50 events community events walks runs 5ks different things of that nature when i left in 2015 we had 150. Have you looked at some of these organizations? Public-private partnerships are something we always look at. Anytime we can partner with the community or through businesses that can help us carry the load to serve the people, that is something that's always looked at. To the lady's point back there, she made that, hey, can we get a sponsor? That's, when it comes to something like that, and I think Steve can speak to this. Well, it's not even a sponsor. So, so Spectra, Budweiser, Budweiser Event Center is run by Spectra, which does sure. fairgrounds. Or the and Pepsi Center, or you know, well, yeah, 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 different. <laughs> the, the, and, and in fact, he is outdoor yeah. network, right? But I, yeah, I can give you a list because I got, you know, I've worked with all of my. We we are more than welcome. That's some of the ways that we can help. If there is a, a, a organization, that's why I was talking about. Is there a nonprofit? I think the the fair up it in Boulder is run by a, a nonprofit, so that kind of takes that that load. Which, as as Mark had said, there isn't, or someone had said, there isn't a fair. Um, that that's you said that so um, there isn't a fair in the in the nation that makes money so you can get a nonprofit organization comes in and, and do that we're always open for that if you've got some ideas yeah, you can it takes it, share it with the staff and we'll yeah, yeah if it takes it off your books and puts it on them if the company makes money they make money if they don't they don't also there's deals on ticket packages beverages. absolutely you know when yep. I did the deal at Connecticut 65 percent of the beer revenue went back to the state of Connecticut we, Which we, is on her. And like I said, anytime we can look at public private partnerships, we do that across the goal. So, like the uh, Jefferson Parkway Authority, that is an effort to do um, a public private get a developer to come in to build the highway or to build that and then 
you know, they take the risk, they, they do the development, and then they share in some revenues on the, on the backside. But that's an example of, of some of the things that we do. Lady right in the center. Hi, Don. I'm Cindy Taylor. Um, I have one question. And I'm a little leery about, I mean, when I heard about this this morning is when I found out about it. I was really worked up over because of a past experience that I had in my neighborhood with the city of Arvada on Spring Mesa. I did not believe when we got done with our meeting that the decision was then going to be made. I thought it was made prior because that's the way everything flows. Can you honestly tell me there has not been a decision made that this is just the beginning and the commissioners are open to what we have to say about this? Yes, ma'am. I can say that. Hi, my, my name is Tammy Hodge. I'm an old leader, been here a long time, raised kids through 4-H, have a, have a son who owns a business in Jefferson County and, and um, does agriculture in Jefferson County, have a daughter that's a veterinarian, founded in this program and scholarships and the whole, the whole bit. I mean, it's, it's, 4-H has been a blessing to us. Um, Mark can testify. I've been around a while. We've been in many <coughs> meetings. <laughs> but anyway, I have a question with something that Mark said about a mission statement that this place is for children and agriculture. You know, no, 